Hey, this is Bear from Porta Keeper, and this evening we are going to do something that I have wanted to do for a very long time. Posted a couple videos earlier today, got this Nish Zero in the mail. I'm actually pretty excited about it. There's been a lot of hype behind it, and it uses a lot of quality parts like Mauser Burrs, and I'm a huge fan of like the Mauser Super Jolly. So it makes sense why people are liking it. But I've seen a couple pictures online. They, they said it was just some of the earlier pictures of the internals. And I'm just dying to see what's inside it. So I have only run two 18 gram shots through this. I've not cleaned it, I've not done anything. I know people, they kind of use their hand as a bellows. I don't have one of those little bellows yet. But we are gonna take this apart and I hope I know how to take it apart. So I took it apart a little bit earlier now let's just take some stuff and set it aside. Got the dosing cup and the little tray. And there is this disc that allows this one bean to go through at a time. And if you don't know what that's for, it as the beans go in there, it acts like a wedge and it'll want to pop the beans up. They call it popcorning. And this little disc prevents that from happening just by letting a bean through and then it's rotating as it goes and it's trapping that bean under as it wedges into the burrs. So I did this earlier, it unscrews. Pretty easy to take apart. There's the adjustment ring and the hopper portion. And then it's a little bit difficult because it's a pretty tight fit. There is the burr. There's actually a little bit of grounds on it. So, kind of messy for two shots. I know they all are. So, it, it, it's just part of having a grinder. We're going to throw that in that cup. We're going to try to save some of these. See how much we get at the end of this. I'll put this here and we'll sweep it into the cup. So you can see on the bottom, let's try to focus real quick. These are Mauser burrs. So that's pretty, pretty big. I mean, that's pretty cool. They're big. They're a good size burr. They're a conical burr. So a lot of grinders nowadays are getting popular with like the flat burrs. I'm going to flip that so it doesn't glare so bad. And the bottom burr. Supposedly, I think this lifts out. So there we go. Has a little bit of grounds on the outside, but again, that's why you clean it. So it's pretty easy to take apart. And there's the bottom burr. Nice looking burr, pretty aggressive. Again, it has Mauser written on the bottom. And these two join together so they look pretty cool I've always thought that the conical looks really cool especially from the top we're gonna set those aside and I'm not okay this just lifts out there's quite a bit of crap on it honestly I need one of those little bellows they look like, I don't know, I don't know if they're repurposed. They look like a baby bottle nipple, in my opinion. I've seen people use them. So there's your little flapper wheel. It's a machined piece of aluminum. And it's nicely machined. I like, I've machined a lot of stuff in my life, so. Pretty high quality piece of machine work there. And then on the inside, We're gonna sweep it all down. There's actually some grounds in there. So. A little bellows would definitely be nice. I think just to push some of that residual stuff out. Let me focus this, I think it's out of focus. There we go. So fingers crossed. I grabbed a 2.5 and a 3. That seems to be what a lot of these things fit. And looks like the 2.5 fits. Pretty good at eyeballing it. 
and they have little hex head screws. There's actually four of them. I don't know why there's four. The bottom of it's plastic, it's smooth. You can get some ground stuck in those little holes, but I mean, that's just every grinder, you're gonna have that issue. So there's like one more that's kind of like odd. It might hold the chute or something or the lid. Looks like the chute. So the chute comes out. They kind of have a clump buster. It's nothing super impressive, but you're also, I mean, this is the niche zero. So clump busters do retain grinds because they're pushing against all those grounds and the forks on those clump brusters they as the grounds go through they kind of move and that's what breaks up all your ground so this is just a bar pretty simple not bad we'll see how bad this clumps earlier my first shot had a little bit of clumping but not uncommon for most grinders to have some clumping so i hope this just comes off Okay, so that just lifts off. There's this fourth screw in here. And there's the inside of the grinder chamber. So your burrs fit down in there. Your motor shaft fits up through the top. There's actually, it looks like this plate and it has a ball bearing in it. So that's what's preventing grounds from getting down into it. And it looks like this thing's just like flopping because I was having to push it down when I was taking it out. A um, couple springs, yeah, they just fall out. Super Jollies and the turns, they do this. The turn used like little pieces of rubber or like hard plastic. Or I guess it's more like soft, I don't know what it is. Some sort of plastic that has just a little bit of give to keep these springs in. Little springs like this kind of drive me nuts. But it's just part of most grinders it seems and there's actually the outlet chute oh i'm like holding it way up in the air there's the outlet chute so there's your main chute and that's going to connect right there so pretty simple i really don't think it's that much different than most of the grinders that i've used personally so far. Very indicative of like my Super Jolly. The turn's pretty similar. So let's see, what's, I got an electronic board over here. I'll try to keep all these pieces nice. Don't wanna lose anything. Real easy to work on. I mean, I'm just figuring this out as I go. Has electronics board to the side. Make sure that's unplugged. And the button on top, when you open it and close it, there's this red button. So if you were to flip this switch on and open the lid, it's gonna stop. So it's actually pushing this, this limit switch button inside. And that goes through with this red push button right there. Losing some springs, that's why I don't like springs. Put those away. So there's the electronics, not much to it. The turn it had like a relay and some stuff in it. And really the whole reason behind the relay was to be a timer. So if you turned it on after 45 seconds, it turns itself off. If you were to accidentally flip this on, it's gonna keep running. It's pretty quiet. So you don't really want that to happen. I would say you don't want to run it all day. And on top, this is kind of like a plastic ring that this fits onto. And it looks like that's what's holding the motor and the electronics in. So let's see, it looks bigger. This one's stripped. We're gonna use the end here. Need some new Allen keys. Been taking too much stuff apart. Once you break them free, it's it's gonna grab. So 
So two and a half and three metric, or yeah, metric is what you need. That one looks bigger. It's probably more like a four. I'm not gonna take that off. So there's electronics. There's a three pin and a four pin. It does have, oh, there we go, geez. It has a nice toggle switch. It has this limit switch, which they're using to turn on and off the, the grinder if you were to open the lid. It has some brass threaded inserts that actually secures, let's see, which way does this go? It secures, this grind chamber down. I'm gonna lose these springs if I don't watch out. I keep turning this thing over. So it looks like that's the main thing that's holding this on is this piece of plastic. So there's the electronics. Let's, let's check out the motor. This is the motor is really what I've been dying to see. And it just lifts out. Okay, well there's no, I mean they're, they're mounted on shock absorbing mounts, but there's no screws holding it in the bottom. I guess it doesn't really need it, but it's just kind of laying there. That's why it was kind of difficult to take apart. A couple grounds on the inside already. It is, try to focus on this. The DC motor, well DC, 110, 220, 60 hertz. So, Hmm. Maybe it's not just the normal DC motor that I was expecting. It is a brushed motor. You can see brushes in there. I don't care for a brushed motor. Because these br brushes do go bad, but they're pretty cheap to replace. It looks like you could remove these four screws. And usually these brushes are just held in place with... I don't know how they're held in there. A little spring, usually. But I bet they never wear out especially as slow as this thing turns it looks to me i can see three points i bet it's a planetary gearbox i really don't want to take that apart because i'm gonna have a ton of gears google what a planetary gearbox is if you're curious it has one go up a bigger gear and then there's a series of small gears that reduce the speed quite a bit so this motor's turning pretty fast and the shaft will be turning pretty pretty slow but yeah there's not a whole lot to this thing it is aluminum i didn't know that originally i thought it was plastic until i don't know six eight months ago when i was looking at it again it i just thought it was plastic it has this oak furniture and some rubber feet on the bottom it says for household house ah, household use only which most of the grinders are they're not NSF certified. It is grounded nicely on the inside. I'm an electrical guy, so having a good ground on this case is pretty good. It looks like you can see the screws protruding through. It looks like these two screws and these two halves would come apart. And I kind of bet this screw here holds this piece of wood down. And on the inside, I don't know. We might have to take it apart. I don't have a big enough, big enough allen key i don't think but the cord stuffs inside here that is a feature that i really do like is you can do your cord management by pushing it in try to push it all in video is getting a little long but i've not seen anything like this out there so i've looked a few times on the internet maybe you guys can comment and someone else has done this but I've been dying to take this thing apart. Mainly I've been dying to look at this motor. Not a very big motor at all. It's about the same as, it's bigger. Yeah, I'd say it's bigger than my Brazza, but it's the same style of brushed motor. It's probably pretty similar. I might have to take my Brazza apart, compare the two, I don't know. I know the Brazza, they don't use a planetary gearbox. I don't remember how it is. I know I've replaced it at least at one point, but 
it was pretty easy to work on. This thing, I mean, I took it apart in 15 minutes. I've at 15 minutes now. And I've been talking a whole bunch. So it's not like it's very hard to work on, it appears. And I don't know how Nish's um, parts and warranty stuff goes. But as long as they're going to send you parts if something were to break. I've always said that this is like kind of like having a big engine and a, a tiny car. This is your big engine. These are pretty premium burrs. And this is your car. It's kind of like putting a 427 on like a Miata. <laughs> it's kind of goofy. It's a little bit... It's, it's out there. It's a concept. We'll put it that way. I've been pretty impressed so far. I've only really done a couple shots. But we're going to be doing a lot of investigation into this niche this week. So make sure to check check back. Follow me if you don't follow me. I'm going to put this thing back together. But before I do, I'm going to stop the video, take a couple pictures of these parts. And just let me know what you think down in the comments. Let me know if there's anything that you want to see. I know I've seen a ton of people say you're, you need to hurry up and compare it to this. I got to break this thing in. Honestly, I, I put it on about setting 13, I think, earlier. Got a great cup. It wasn't anything crazy, but it was a nice cup. It was pretty much perfectly dialed in on first attempt. I mean, I wouldn't probably change much. Maybe up a hair, but every bean is different, so you just kind of got to play with it. So let me know. Thanks for watching.